Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to be discussing uh, the role of Reaper in the new 3v3 um, ranked season that has just launched. It's a team deathmatch mode using the 2v2 maps um, that were used two seasons ago in the 2v2 season and it's very very fun um i've had a very good time up until now um it is very chaotic um especially since the 2v2 arenas are quite small um but actually reaper and uh, necromancer and scourge in general are all doing very very well in this um game mode i would say mostly just because as a necromancer a lot of um your damage and sustainability comes from hitting multiple targets getting a lot of life force siphoning from a lot of enemies however you can also be easily focused and shut down so it really depends on how you play and what you play um in this bit in this video i mean we are going to be talking about the four builds that i've been using so far for this uh 3v3 season i've had a very good time um, with my standard uh, reaper build i also have a, a scourge build that i've actually been using which uh, does quite well um, but first let's get straight into it so the build that i've used for most of my matches so far is the solo blood magic reaper build um, basically this build was inspired by the well build however when playing the well build two uh, ranked seasons ago um, you do notice that you lack a lot of uh, mobility because you don't have Flesh Worm. Um, and you're also lacking Connie Clear because usually I take um, Well of Blood instead of Consume Conditions. So what I did is change Vampiric Rituals to Unholy Martyr, which means that we now have more Condition Clearing and that every time we leave Shroud, we also get Life Force up to 9%. Um, this has helped me a lot and that together with um, Speed of Shadows um runes of speed spectral walk and um flesh worm means that you still have a lot of mobility while at the same time having life size life siphons from vampiric and vampiric presence um and then also having condition clearing because of an only martyr consume conditions and spectral walk for this build um it's berserker amulet because you just want full damage runes of speed Greatsword Axe Focus with Opportunity and Energy on Greatsword and Exploitation and Opportunity on Axe Focus. In the traits, we have Ritual of Life, Vampiric Presence, which heals for quite a lot, especially in Shroud. And lastly, we have Unholy Martyr. Um, Speed of Shadows is absolutely crucial for the swiftness and for the remove, uh, removing of the movement impairing conditions. Um, Soul Barbs, Death Perception, Chilling Nova for more chill and also more damage. This can actually do quite some damage. And then Soul Eater and Reaper's Onslaught. So pretty standard build, uh, but it has a little bit of everything with mobility, condition clearing, sustain in the form of siphons. And then lastly, in um, for this build, we have Lich Form, which has become extremely strong again since the latest patch. Basically, especially in 3v3s, when the rounds reset um, after every 3v3, um, you have Lich Form for every single engage. So being able to use this skill um, and spam its auto attack really just wins a lot of fights. Like I would say Necromancer is really one of the stronger 3v3 classes in the game right now, mostly just because of this skill. Um, and while a lot of people do like to spam the auto attack, it m m needs to be mentioned that all the Lich Form skills are actually very, very good in their own way. The number two skill, basically, you can just spam it. It's free damage. It just shoots a bolt out, which applies vulnerability and cripple. The number three is absolutely amazing as it allows you to teleport to it and is also a fear, an AoE fear. So you can um, fear multiple people that are, for example, rezzing someone. The number four skill summons a lot of uh, bone minions, if I remember correctly, who do even more AoE damage. And then the number five skill is super interesting as it steals vitality from enemies and then gives it to you, which means that you heal and they take damage and have a less lesser health pool. Um, so all of the skills are amazing. Um, and this brings me to my next build, which is the Well Reaper. Um, well Reaper you have the same um, weapons and skills as before but now instead of the rune of speed you have a rune of chronomancer 
and that is super nice as this gives two seconds of quickness every time you cast a well. With this build, we have three wells, which means up to six seconds of quickness. And quickness and lich form is the most like potent combination in this game. Like lich form on quickness is there's so much damage. Being able to cast all those five skills super quickly can absolutely just win outnumbered fights very easily. Um, so now when actually uh, this was the same build as my 2v2 build but now the only difference is really that you have lich form instead of chill to the bone because uh, it has just been up increased in damage so much for the rest it's pretty much the same thing except for um, relentless pursuit instead of chilling nova because uh, we have less condition clearing in this build so having those movement impairing conditions do less uh, impacts on us is very uh, handy to have um, and then, we, of course, we have Vampiric Rituals, which gives us even more healing, protection, and a reduced recharge on the well skills. For this build, you can really swap the wells for whichever you want. Uh, well of Darkness is actually not too bad. Blinding is super useful. I personally prefer Well of Suffering, as this is the lowest cooldown well, which means you get like the most life siphon healing. Pretty if you like do the math and assume that it's a stationary target. And then I also have Well of Power, as it's the only stun break and well. With this build, you can also easily take Consume Conditions or. Uh, spectral armor or chill to the bone but this is really the setup that i prefer most of the time um then lastly for my reaper builds we have the uh the fear reaping build this is uh this build has actually been around for quite some time mijo likes to play this build uh basically it relies upon the spectral ring and fear of death which is a trait in um the soul reaping trait line it's very similar to my solo blood magic reaper build, but in here, instead of taking soul barbs, you take fear of death. Um, usually people play this with spite and they take dread. However, I like um, unholy martyr so much and the sustain that the blood magic trade line gives you that I still take ritual of life, vampire presence and unholy martyr. Um, and simply only swap, only take this fear traits because with this build, you have four sources of fear. Um, let me go to the right equipment template with this build we have the staff uh, reaper's mark which applies one and a half seconds of fear we have spectral ring which is one and a half seconds of fear we have terrify which is one and a half seconds of fear and then in lich form we have uh what's it called ripple of horror which is a three second fear and this three second fear allows it to hit four um lich form auto attacks at the same time it is an absolutely insane fear when coupled with fear of death and that is also why i like this build so much because the fears and the lich form also just are just such a good combination again with this build you still have mobility because you are taking uh, spectral walk and worm we also take soul marks instead of speed of shadows because we are running a staff for the extra fear instead we take um when taking this build we take rune of the traveler so that we move a little bit faster and we also have five percent condition duration from this rune also when taking staff it's important to note that i take sigil of intelligence this is useful as um the number four skill and staff does a, like quite a lot of damage 1000 base damage so when you uh, cast a skill you really want it to crit it so here on the thief it crits for 2000 but in matches against squishier targets i've seen this crit for um up to three four five thousand damage sometimes uh, so hence i take um sigil of intelligence otherwise this build is relatively the same i run it with berserker amulet depending on the matchup for any of these builds you can really take uh marauder amulet for um condition based classes like core necromancers or condition revenants um or if you're going up against power classes i also like to take demolisher amulet quite a lot but for the rest it's uh quite similar to me to the solo blood magic reaper build um and it's really just as fun and relies more upon um hitting your fear skills staying back getting life force kiting around you only have ranged weapons except for reaper shroud so really you just need to kite around not get hit and then place your times uh, place your fears at the right time lastly another build that i've been very much into up until now 
Um, this got recommended to me by a friend. It's a Scourge Damage build. Um, this build is basically a little bit like the Well Reaper build um, and the Fear Reaper build as we take Staff with Runes of the Traveler um, and then also take Wells. This build is as like long, medium ranged, power damage based Necromancer build as you can get. Uh, because with this build, all your damage is ranged. You have shades which are ranged, you have wells which are ranged, your axe is ranged, your staff is ranged. So with this build, you really just want to kite around the map, which is super effective in 2v2 maps as they have a lot of um, elevation differences and they're super small. Um, so this means that you can teleport using your sandswell skill, get barrier, teleport back and forth, drop some shades, drop some marks, and then also drop some... Uh, some wells. Um, when enemies tend to get too close, I use my elite skill, which converts boons into conditions and also does a lot of power damage. Here, look at this. So it basically ticks for like a thousand damage each second. I mean, it's not too much, but you also get a lot of might from it, and it's just super useful as it also converts all those boons. Um, let's go over the complete build. Um, so basically we have a staff axe focus. Um, I take berserker amulet for the damage again uh, Sigil of intelligence again. The sigils really don't change too much in my builds um, We have ritual of life vampiric presence and vampiric rituals, which is rather straightforward Then we have soul marks as we are taking a staff Then we have fear of death because in this build we still have two fears We have reapers mark and we have garish pillar um, so having those fears be increased um, is quite an advantage. Then because Shroud is not really that effective with Scourge, because you know it's only a 6 second Shroud on a 25 second cooldown, we take Eternal Life, which means that the tooltip here is wrong, but the life force, life force threshold is 20. So if you use all your um, skills, uh, it needs to recharge. But basically, what it will do is it will charge your life force by 3% every 1 second up until 20%. And if you have 20%, then that means that you can really just spam your F2 and your F3 skill to get barrier and um, condition cleansing. Then we take Abrasive Grit to remove conditions when we apply barrier. We get barrier from um, Sand Cascade, from our heal skill, and from Sand Swell. We also have Sadistic Searing to re reduce the cooldown of our heal skill, um, mobility skill, and our elite skill. And then lastly, Sand Savant, so that Sand Savant, Savant, I think Savant, um, so that you just have one big, sh uh, one big shade, which makes it more manageable to play in PvP. So that's the builds I have up until now. If none of these builds really suit you, then there's always the um, alternative build of Condition Core Necromancer. This has become quite a popular build and I really don't enjoy playing it. Like Necromancer is just slow, it's tanky, it's boring in my opinion. Uh, but it is, I'm not gonna lie, it's a very successful build which is, which you know, it does its job. Um, so you can always play that. I don't have any footage of me playing that build unfortunately because that's really not my way to go. Um, but otherwise, you know, these are some other wells. Uh, some other builds that you could try out if you want to. Um, I've had a lot of fun with these, and uh, if you have any questions about them, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Um, as for now, I think there's going to be a little bit more gameplay in the back. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I'm going to be posting a, uh, I'm going to be posting some roaming footage of me relatively soon. Um, also, don't forget to send your clips for the top five uh, clip submissions. Um, for my um, top five PvP and World vs. World clip compilation. Also, don't forget to send um, your World vs. World clips to uh, Nudie for the Make Roaming Great Again challenge. And um, other than that, yeah, no, that's really all I had to say. Yeah. All right. I hope you guys have a very nice day and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the video. Bye bye.